My name is James Buccini and I've been a blockchain developer since 2017. In this video, I'm going to go through some ways that you can use Etherscan to gain insights, interact with contracts on the Ethereum network. So this is the main block explorer for Ethereum, Etherscan.io. We also have like Gorelli.etherscan.io for the test nets. Straight away from the front page, we can see the Ether price, the transactions per second, the current gas price, which is the price you're gonna be paying for in gas fees when you're doing a transaction, uh, the market cap of Ethereum as a total, and the current block. If we scroll down, we can see a list of the latest transactions and the latest blocks. Transactions are particularly useful because there's lots of transactions per block and it's just a random selection or the last ones in the block. But if we open up one of these blocks, we can scroll down and see that all the transactions that were executed in this block to see what was going on during this 13 seconds of the Ethereum network. So we've got some transfers and these are all the function names. So this is a Uniswap V2 swap, for example, swap to exact tokens. We've got approvals for ERC20 tokens. This is a USDC, a stable coin on Ethereum. And for the most part, this all looks like pretty standard stuff. Bear in mind that a lot of this is going to be MEV as well. There's going to be a lot of transactions going through from MEV bots, kind of front running arbitrage type trades, and they'll be included in this transaction list. And right at the top here, we have an Arbitrum sequence for transaction. This is a proof basically being posted to the Ethereum network from the Arbitrum batch submitter. One of my favorite ways to use Etherscan is to actually interact with contracts. Here on the Gorilla Etherscan testnet, we've got the wrapped Ether WEF contract. And we can look at this, we can look at the most recent transactions that for people that have used this token, this is a token on, on the testnet. We can also look at the holders, who holds the most amount of tokens. This isn't particularly useful for this, but if you're looking at something for like a meme coin, for example, and then seeing how the token allocations are distributed, and you know that all these top ones or contract addresses, this little symbol here, means that it's not actually a person, it's a contract address. It can be slightly uh, misrepresented with things like multi-sig wallets, but generally it's an indicator that it might be a contract rather than a wallet that's holding them tokens, like a liquidity pool or something like that. So we go down to the contract code, we can see that this is using an old version of Solidity, it's the WEF9 contract, the got some kind of variables here, the wrap defer, the WEF token symbol, 18 decimals, and then we've got the func standard functions laid out here for what we can do with that token. We can also copy this into uh, Remix if you want to try to deploy it locally, or we can just open it up in VS Code, the online IDE. Let's close that off for now, and let's go in and have a go at actually interacting with the contract. So let's connect our Web3 wallet first, and we connect the MetaMask. Note that I have to have MetaMask connected to the Gorelli test network rather than the Ethereum mainnet for this, because I'm using the testnet gorelli.etherscan.io test website. So we can open up the read variables, total supply, decimals, et cetera, et cetera. But what I can do as well is actually create write transactions from Etherscan directly. So let's say I want to deposit some Ether to get an allocation of WEF. This is part of this WEF wrapped Ethereum contract. You deposit Ether into it and you get the ERC20 token out. Confirm that transaction in MetaMask. You can see that's gone through. You can actually interact with Ethereum blockchain directly from the contracts on the Ether scan. If we go back to the Ethereum mainnet now, let's have a quick look at some of the other features. We've got a top token list of all the top tokens listed by circulating market cap. We also have token transfers. This provides a very quick and dirty way to kind of see what is moving about in that block. There's not as much wash trading on Ethereum as there are on other networks because the transaction fees are so high, but I still take this with a pinch of salt as to what's kind of popular and what's growing in traction. If it's something you haven't heard of, then it might add a little bit of alpha where you can go in and research that project further. It's similar with NFTs. You can look up the top NFTs over different time periods. And you can also see the latest trades to see what's going through. The other thing you see is the latest mints, and this will show you what NFTs are currently being minted on the Ethereum network. We have some charts and stats. I think this is quite useful for things like the supply growth chart, which you can now see is dropping back off, a beautiful chart indeed. That's the total supply of ether. We also have unique address charts. There's one other one I like to keep an eye on, which is the daily active Ethereum addresses. I think this is an interesting chart, again, because you don't get much wash trading on Ethereum. I think you can actually create indicators around this chart for high time frame trading signals. When the markets are booming, you obviously get these massive peaks, which follow price up as Ethereum gets used more and more, gas prices go crazy. And then 
as the market sells off, we decline into a state of depression where no one cares about crypto again, before eventually making another rise and following the market cycle on. Daily ETH Burnt is another interesting chart because it shows how much gas fees and how much kind of transactional value is going through the Ethereum network. The more kind of value the network's delivering, the more people are willing to pay in gas fees. The more gas fees that are paid, the more gas is burnt. So this chart basically is a pseudo indicator for how useful the Ethereum network is being at any moment in time. We also, we also have some top statistics. We have things like the transactions, the biggest transactions going through, top ETH senders, top ETH receivers, uh, the, the, highest the highest transaction counts sent and received. It's quite interesting You see most of these are centralized exchanges. So the centralized exchanges are actually a big contributor to the gas fee burn on Ethereum because they're sending out a lot of transactions to users. I feel like in the future they'll have their own bundlers and they can use this account extraction to quite effectively bundle them transactions and save a lot of funds in gas fees. We have a list of the top tokens here by senders. This is over a 24 hour period and changes to seven days to get a bit more wider frame of results. We've got top tokens by unique senders, top tokens by unique receivers, and top tokens by total uniques. So Tether, USDC, it's quite a significant amount more Tether transactions than USDC, which is interesting. For developers, there's an API which you can use to interact and pull data from Etherscan. This is a REST API. We also have a way of verifying our own contracts. So when we deploy a contract, we can normally use a plugin for this, like Hard Hat Foundry, Remix. They will have plugins where you can do this automatically. You just put in an API key and it will verify your contract so that you can use it from within Etherscan. And also it kind of gives it that API, which front-end developers often need. There's a smart contract search tool. I haven't used this much, but you can search for contract source codes by filter by the contract, the deployer address, the creation date, block number, and more. There's a diff checker, pretty standard. And then we've got a bytecode to opcode transactor, Viper compiler, and broadcast transactions. The other tool that I use a lot is the gas tracker. Obviously, when you're doing transactions on Ethereum, it can get expensive. And we can see here, this gives a breakdown of what the current gas price is what a standard kind of Uniswap swap or an OpenSea sale will cost as a transaction fee. This is an average fee. You can obviously change this slightly depending on how what, what your priority is. If you want a kind of high priority transaction you want to get through immediately, then you can set it a little bit higher. If we scroll down, we can see the top 50 gas guzzlers. These are the contracts that are consuming the amount, most amount of gas. So the users are paying the gas fees, but they're interacting with these contracts. We've got the Uniswap router, Tether stablecoin, Arbitrum sequencer, Seaport is actually uh, the contract libraries for OpenSea, ZK Sync, MetaMask, uh, One Inch Aggregator, etc. I think this is a really good way to see what is picking up traction in the Ethereum ecosystem. If users are willing to pay gas fees to interact with these contracts, they suggest that there's some product market fit there and that might have some long term investment potential. If we go into the Tether stablecoin here, there's one more bit I want to show you, which is the token tracker page. This is a separate from the token contract page, and it gives you some more information like DEX trades, which you can see kind of who's buying and selling or who's swapping on different DEXs. Uh, it gives you the max supply. There's more information on the holders here, and you can also interact with the contract directly from that as well. Particularly for things like meme tokens, you can look at the analytics and see what that token is doing, how it's being traded, and kind of where the transfers are going and who the holders are, it's really useful for some insights into the on-chain data surrounding that particular product. I hope this tutorial has been of interest and it's provided some insights into how developers use Etherscan as a gateway into the Ethereum network. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you're interested in DeFi and developer insights, then subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.